Keeping the American dream alive, President Obama said is this is the defining issue of our time in his State of the Union address this week. Listen. We can either settle for a country where a shrinking number of people do really well, while a growing number of Americans barely get by. Or we can restore an economy where everyone gets a fair shot. Who could disagree with that? Will Kane is a CNN contributor. I'm putting you on the spot, Will. You I say, do. you say, exactly, you say that, that, that uh, the, the things that have made the United States what it is today, capitalism, democracy, the Industrial Revolution, none of them were ever based on the idea that the economy does or should reward people equally. And you've actually come armed with a chart that That's proves right. Right. Uh, that income, the income inequality debate is off base. Tell me what you're talking about here. I think the conversation on income inequality focuses on the wrong question. It constantly asks, how are you doing compared to someone else? Right. The real question is, how are you doing? And the system that happens to benefit the most people on the face of the earth also results in inequality. What I have here is a chart that shows data from the last 2,000 years of human existence. That is a chart. I like big, big sets of data. I don't data think I've hours. ever done a 2,000 year chart. This is the life's work of a British economist named Angus Madison. And what it shows is for the first 1,800 years right. of human existence since 1 AD, we made not much north of $500 a year on average. That's uh -huh. per capita GDP adjusted for inflation, yada, yada, yada. But something happened 200 years ago, something. Call it the Industrial Revolution, capitalism, democracy, whatever it may be, it wasn't a focus of economic equality. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that 500 years ago, we were all equally poor. Today, we were unequally rich. Very interesting. All right, Harold Meyerson is editor-at-large of the American Prospect. He's an op-ed columnist for the Washington Post. He looks decidedly unimpressed by this yeah. argument that Will just put forward. Harold, what do you think? Well, I think what happened is that James Watt invented the steam engine uh, in, uh, in, in Britain, and the Industrial Revolution began. Right. And as even, even as Karl Marx, not, no uh, fan of capitalism he, even as Karl Marx noted, uh, industrialization and capitalism produced a quantum leap at that point uh -huh. in human productivity. That was the main ch change, was human productivity. And that, that's why that chart looks the way it does. I mean, the chart's not wrong. Uh, the average wealth of the average person began to take off, first in Britain as a result of this invention, and then as other countries grew industrialized there too, as in China today. But uh, I, I think this is a separate question from the question of how equal or unequal incomes are within a given country. I don't think it's a separate question, Harold. I appreciate, I, I think you give a lot of credence to the industrial revolutions as, as it should be, but I think you then dismiss the effects of capitalism going on simultaneously. And I, and I think that the problem here is when we talk about inequality, we start to erode the concepts that allowed that chart to go through explosive growth 200 years ago. When you constantly evaluate relative wealth, you threaten absolute wealth. The fact is, we have all gotten vastly more wealthy over the last 200 years with a total ignorance towards equality, economic equality. Uh, let me ask you this then, Harold. You recently wrote that as the American middle class has thinned out, the idea of America as a land of opportunity uh, has become a farce. Now, what happened to the concept that I, I think is so important here, this concept of social mobility or socioeconomic mobility, the idea which you could not do in 1 AD and you could not do in 16 or 1700 AD, the idea that you could be born into one uh, socioeconomic place in life and die in another one. Do, do we still have that in America? Not nearly enough. What many studies show is that uh, traditionally we have been this great land of opportunity and we measure that by intergenerational mobility. Mm -hmm. Can sons do better than their fathers and can daughters do better than their mothers? That's been in decline in the United States for the last 20 or so years and there are other nations in Europe, in Northern Europe in particular, that have surpassed us that also have greater equality of, uh, of resources and, and, and wealth. So I think the, uh, the, the, chain and the, the chain is broken down here. The ladder has a couple of rungs missing. I think there's a whole stratum of jobs, uh, jobs in, uh, in manufacturing in particular, right. 
uh, which have disappeared. And that, actually, that's one reason why presidential candidates of both parties, not just Barack Obama, but also Rick Santorum and even, even Mitt Romney, are talking about things to help the return of American manufacturing, right. because that's one of the things and, that's and, broken And you in this both country. draw the same conclusion, that if it was the Industrial Revolution that got us to this place of greater productivity and or wealth, uh, the fact is that that thing that made America and built the American middle class does not exist to the same degree as it did uh, some time ago.